thank you for your kind introduction. I would like to speak about the implementation on the first day of treatment in Europe from the central and eastern perspective. And if we look at the data from the epidemiological point of view, you can note that actually 16% of people who are diagnosed with HIV live in the Western Europe, 4% in the center, while 80% in the east. So a significant number of the infections are being diagnosed in the Central and Eastern Europe. If we look at the European uh, region and the uh, card coverage target uh, in Europe, you can see that the red arrows represent Central and Eastern Europe. So you can see that most of this region is below the target. And if we try to compare the um, card coverage target between the West Center and the East, you can see the decreasing trend from 91 through 73 to 46 percent, uh, with uh, actually uh, quite a wide ranges for uh, each region. Uh, and at the first look, when we look at the virologic efficacy across the uh, region and uh, across Europe, uh, our, for example, Polish experience says that 95% of people who are on treatment are undetectable. So it, the data look very, very nicely. But if we would like to take a look at the percentage again of the people who meet this virologic suppression target, again, you can see that majority of Central and Eastern Europe are below the target uh, with uh, below, with uh, the numbers being below the average. So the West is 93%, center 75 and East 78. And please take a look at the differences by the route of transmission. MSM is obviously the most adherent and the best diagnosed group in all the regions. So the virological suppression targets are met there um, quite nicely, but people who inject drugs uh, are worse, especially in the center and in the east. So here there is a huge problem of meeting the virological suppression target. And if we would like to look at the patterns of suboptimal linkage and treatment across Europe, you can see that this gap uh, of a uh, number of people who are diagnosed but not uh, treated uh, increasing from uh, from uh, from the west to the center to the east. So this is uh, also quite important data. And now we know that in the last years there has been a shift in the policies. Uh, most of the countries are not initiating based on CD4 count. So there is an initiation regardless of the CD4 count almost for all the countries. And um, a very rich time. Uh, between confirmed HIV diagnosis and start of treatment uh, in majority of countries used to be within one month and this gap is now shortening so people are looking for the one week, two week uh, from diagnosis treatment. So this is where we are heading uh, also in the Central and Eastern Europe. And obviously the guidelines in the most of Central and European countries are consistent with EELTS guidelines. And generally, across all the recommendations for Europe, uh, uh, the initiation of um, antiretroviral treatment is recommended uh, irrespective of CD4 count, with focus on immediate, immediate card initiation uh, based on the people with lower CD4 count, pregnant women, and with primary uh, HIV infections. We must though think about the special populations, especially in the context of Central and Eastern Europe, especially uh, tuberculosis, for which I will come back uh, in a second. So obviously, uh, if we want to think about the immediate treatment in the CE context, we have to uh, think about various uh, issues so the approach to close up the gap between HIV diagnosis linkage to care and art initiation. So we have the balance between efficacy, uh, meeting the U equals U target, so the uh, shorter time for the initiation, the shorter time 
for reaching the target of undetectability, less resource involvement. Uh, so this is especially important in the current uh, era of COVID. And on the other hand, what the results provide? Results provide higher numbers of people who will be lost to follow up. We sacrifice the issues with migrants, which might not understand fully uh, the necessity of treatment and need to um, discuss it, especially from the family point of view. And we also think about the stigma um, that we do not deal with these issues uh, significantly well uh, if we initiate the same day of very, very early treatment. And obviously, from the pop from the perspective of people who take drugs, we sometimes are not sure if all the drugs who people take are uh, safe in the context of antiretroviral uh, use. Uh, obviously, in Central and Eastern Europe, there is a higher percentage of females among HIV populations, uh, so there is a higher need for family discussions. There, is, there are issues with acceptance of diagnosis, and there are issues with depression and psychology, uh, especially in the aging. So this is between um, mental disorders, cognitive disorders, and uh, disease uh, acceptance. So if you would like to look at the uh, EACs and, for example, Polyscientific Aid Society treatment guidelines, you can have various options where you could initiate the treatment on the same day. Uh, and we claim that optimal time as soon as feasible. So we base on the feasibility, not on the lab results which need to be uh, taken. And please take a look, but obviously EAX has some statements on the genotypic drug resistance, where you should wait, where you should not wait, uh, where we should focus on the same day rapid uh, treatment. So the, the focus is on the patient, not on the treatment. So sometimes the approach for the immediate treatment is better, sometimes uh, it's slightly better to wait. But in the context of early diagnosis and the recommendation, uh, we have majority of people from the East and from the center being diagnosed late, um, especially uh, among the heterosexual populations and especially among the injection drug users. So you can also see that, for example, in our country, the probability of a late care entry has slightly decreased over the last uh, 15 years, but it's still, late care entry is still above 50% of people and advanced HIV disease where you have AIDS or very low CD4 count below 200 uh, is seen in approximately 45% of people who enter uh, the care. So this is something which is actually uh, quite important from the perspective of immediate treatment initiation. On one hand, we will want to initiate the treatment in these populations very, very early. On one hand, we need to think about the possibility of opportunistic infections and drug-drug interactions. So the same day treatment in these populations will be based on the assessment of the risk of opportunistic infection and the necessity to possible adjust for, of possible adjustments of the treatment uh, if uh, the need arises from the DDI perspective. And if we would like to look at the transmission categories, you can see that late diagnosis in MSM and heterosexuals are more or less stable. And you could also see that heterosexual populations are generally diagnosed late. And we have actually quite an uh, unfortunate trend among our injection drug users where the, the late care entry uh, numbers or frequencies increase in the last, uh, in the last uh, years. And uh, when we think about the first day treatment, we obviously have to think about the opportunistic infections. And from our Central and European perspective, tuberculosis will be the key. And obviously we know about the delays related to, to tuberculosis, cryptococcal meningitis or CMV disease, but please remember, uh, and please uh, be aware, so I just uh, try to re-emphasize this point, which may be the hindrance towards the same day implementation, but actually there is a strong gradient from the West to the East of the numbers of tuberculosis uh, in the Central and Eastern Europe. And also 
if we would try to revise proportion of people who are diagnosed with TB among uh, AIDS diagnosed in Europe, ma majority of the countries where you have uh, TB plus AIDS will be from the Central Europe. And obviously, uh, the world, it will be the most common um, opportunistic infection uh, in the East, regardless uh, the uh, transmission route. So you can see that it is a problem uh, in the context of the same day implementation of the treatment. On the other hand, uh, there is a huge discussion on the resistance. So should we do resistance? Should we not do the resistance? Should re resistance matter in the context of the same day uh, treatment initiation? And please take a look. Firstly, uh, there is basically no transmitted integrase resistance. So these are again our data where we had only E157 Q polymorphisms, quite common, but we know that these do not significantly affect the treatment efficacy uh, for the especially second wave uh, integrase inhibitor. So here, Victegravir, Dolutegravir uh, will work very nicely. Elvitegravir uh, will work as well, but uh, you have to watch for the accumulation of other mutations. And we know that this mutation in our region was associated with female gender injection drug use, um, and hepatitis C co-infection, which is a surrogate marker for IDU. So we know that from the perspective of uh, integrase resistance, same day treatment initiation is not an issue. So we do not really need to wait for the genotypic test results. Uh, on the other hand, there is some uh, resistance to real uh from four to 5%. So uh, here you would have to think whether uh, this option would be the best to initiate very, very rapidly. Uh, thirdly, uh, just moving away from the resources which we need to use for the genotyping, you need to think about the possibility to make the test and receive the result uh, within the reasonable time frame. Uh, so this is what has been happening in the context of COVID recently, uh, we know that um, quarantine for contact, uh, flight delay uh, and clinics have not been working normally. Uh, only 30% of clinics have been working fully. Uh, so there are patients being on quarantine. So also the same day treatment for us is a very attractive option in the current COVID-19 era where we have staff shortage because very often the staff is being moved uh, from the IT uh, to COVID. There is a challenge in the HIV-1 and viral load availability, especially in the current situation. So again, the same thing treatment with one day uh, drug where there is no drug drug interactions and which uh, has similar efficacy across all the CD4 and viral load strata will be very attractive and sometimes with restricted access to medical facility, you just need something which will work um, very quickly and efficiently where you do not need to worry about anything. So benefits and barriers for immediate treatment from our perspective. Less strain on resources, which are now even more constrained than ever. Uh, no resistance and viral load associated delay. So we know that it will not be the issue. Increasing availability of drugs, uh, like again, Bictegravir, Tenofovir, uh, Alafenamide with Pantrocytibine, where you have very little number of drug-drug uh, interactions. On the other hand, we have tuberculosis and risk of iris associated with this disease, which uh, actually hinder the possibility to give us the drugs on the same day. Uh, higher number of late diagnosis, so with a balance uh, of a risk of opportunistic infection and thinking about the risk of a loss to follow up. But here in this context, in some population, you can overcome it even on the uh, first visit. So this is my very short presentation. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to share our views.